With me now is Jason Riley, the Wall Street Journal columnist, Fox News contributor. Uh, Jason, first off on the president's meeting with all those Republicans tomorrow. How is that going to go? He needs virtually every one of them. Uh, how is that going to go? Well, well, we'll see, you know, which side of the bed Donald Trump rolls out of in the morning. I mean, uh, it's so hard to predict what this president's going to do. But I agree with Doug Holt's take, and um, they need to get past their petty personal differences and, and get something done that they promised the voters they will get done. So hopefully they can put that aside. Trump knows he has very little wiggle room here. Um, I think the, the, the Senate should pass this thing. Um, the only way they're going to get tax reform done is if they can do it without Democratic votes, and this budget will allow and them to do that. why did they seem to make efforts for Democratic votes by espousing things like uh, a high tax on the upper-income folks, uh, keeping it at 39.6%, whatever level it kicks in? Now, I know part of that is, do the numbers work out? Uh, so I don't dismiss that. But also, it seems to be this notion that maybe they can get some Democratic votes if it doesn't look too slanted to the rich. I Yes, I think that's it. Also, I think... Can they get Democratic votes doing that? I, I don't know. I mean, this, this uh, like Doug Holtz Aiken said, I don't see any Democrats sticking their neck out and being that, that, that vote that puts them over the edge. Um, if it looks like something is going to pass, yes, yes they'll, yeah. they'll do that. But remember, this is not an ideological White House, Neil. You're right. Tr Donald Trump has surrounded himself with a lot of people that weren't th no, that long ago were Democrats. Uh, they're not necessarily philosophically opposed Gary Cohen to, among them. to yeah. Steve Mnuchin, Gary Cohen. Absolutely. They're not philosophically opposed to tax cuts on the rich, so to speak. They're not these pure supply siders of, of um, the Reagan era. That, that is not this White House. So, yes, it could be a play strategically for Democratic votes, but also this could be just something that doesn't bother them that much, raising taxes on rich people. The president is uh, greeting uh, the Singapore Prime Minister, Lee Sien Long. Uh, they're going to be giving a joint uh, sort of a presser, not presser as much as a statement later on. This is the second time the two have met. Uh, the prime minister has been a very frequent cheerleader for the president uh, at a time when other leaders uh, were second guessing the president. He has been quite supportive, saying that he admires his spunk and leadership. They're going to meet for a while. Uh, then we'll no doubt go to the Oval Office where they'll exchange some views and maybe take some questions. Uh, again, the Singapore uh, prime minister now meeting with the president of the United States. To your point earlier, um, Jason, about where the president is coming from, within that interview with our Maria Bartiromo, he gave two different answers to this um, fifth bracket. And I say fifth bracket because he includes the zero percent as a bracket. Um, so this additional bracket for the upper income. How is that going to go down uh, if there is, a, you know, the, the million and up crowd still see a 39.6 percent rate? Who knows? It's, it's going to depend. I, I think it, it will depend on the overall package and where this would fit in and what he thinks he t is to be gained. Is this another play for Democratic votes? Um, Wouldn't it, it be a kick if they go through all these hoops and they don't get a one Democratic vote? Right? <laughs> I, I, I think they have to assume they will not get a Democratic yeah. vote. I really do. I, I, I don't think um, there's a lot of bipartisanship in the air in Washington right now. So I think Can I they have then, to. What happens to these markets, which have been on a tear? If if tax cuts don't materialize. We could see a softening, I think. I think, I think that the, uh, the reaction to the markets, that is, has, it's baked in that there's going to be something done this year. So if I, they I, I think it's. Pan out, then it, it's, it's a sell off baked in as well? I don't know if it would be if it would be a sell-off, but I, I think it would be a cooling 10%. off. It would be a cooling off. I, I, I think you would see. Um, it's also going to depend on what kind of business you have. Right. Uh, I mean, a lot of a, a, a lot of this has been driven by companies that do have some some uh, business abroad, international, multinational right. companies and so forth. And again, the, I think the real meat here is what's going to be done with these corporate rates. A lot of money parked overseas. Will it be brought back here um, so that businesses can invest, people can get raises, uh, hiring so can take place? What if the, they, they just pour I mean, into their stock? I, I don't think they can I, do. They, they can, but I don't think that's what they want to do. I, I really, really think they are itching to expand, to build uh, capital investment and so forth. And a lot of the debate going on here is about these rates and, 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 and the, the brackets and so forth. But that's not really what's going to produce the growth, I think. What's going to produce the growth here is going to be money coming back from overseas. And I think that's the real key part of this tax reform, if you believe that economic growth is ultimately what, what we need. All right. Jason, well said. Jason Riley, Wall Street Journal columnist, more important to us. He's a Fox News contributor. We like that.